All right, my beautiful people, thanks so much for tuning in to the Money Mind Shift. I'm ERGJ, a certified financial educator. We're back again going through the book, How Rich People Think by Steve Saibo. Steve, coming from my check. Now, here's the deal, guys. I've been promoting this book. I guess I've been promoting it, but I've been telling you to get this book for 54 straight days. And quite honestly, guys, I know many people still have not gotten the book, and that's okay. Uh, if you do want to get the book, you can get it through my website, www.ergj.net. And, and here's the deal, man. Um, we're going to be going through 15 minutes today to keep broke away. Now, here's the question. You got to ask yourself, if you go through 15 minutes today, if this is your first time watching this show, whatever you might be watching, you got to ask yourself, man, is it true? Is it really worth it? So test it out 15, to 15 minutes today. Here's the deal, guys. Wealth begins in the mind. Again, it begins in the mind. You must be wealthy in your mind long before you're wealthy in your wallet. And many people want to be wealthy, but they're not willing to do what's necessary to get wealth. Uh, many people know how to get money, but know not, don't know what to do with it once they get it. And so if you want to be wealthy, do what wealthy people do. Study what wealthy people do. Learn from the wealthy. Don't learn from the broke. If you learn from the broke, you're going to learn what not to do, but you still won't know what to do. So here's the deal, guys, man. We're going through this book. It's 15 minutes a day to keep broke away. And you got to ask yourself, do you have 15 minutes? And are you willing to invest it in yourself so you can change the way that you think? So you can change the results that you get in life. So here's the deal. We're on day number 54 of our 100-day journey. After today, we'll still have 46 more days to go. And if you're still not convinced, well, you got 46 more days to do your convincing. I know you don't have a lot of time. I don't have a lot of time. It's day number 54. Let's get it. All right. The world class believes getting rich is outside their control. The world class knows getting rich is an inside job. The middle class believes getting rich is outside of their control. But the world class knows getting rich is an inside job. Now, the masses do not understand the nature of building wealth. I repeat that again. The masses do not understand. The nature of building wealth, which is why generation after generation approaches it the same way and almost always fails. Public schools teach the basics of ba balancing a checkbook, adhering to a budget, and basic math. This trains children and young adults to think about money in linear, logical terms, which can seal their fate financially before they can earn their high school diploma. Unless, unless, they are exposed to the truth about building wealth through a book like this, a speaker who challenges them at a personal development seminar or a rich mentor. The game is over before it begins. So here's the question, guys. If we see this cycle continuing generation after generation after generation, and we talk about breaking the generational poverty curse, here's my question. Are you willing to put your children in front of a book like this? Are you willing to put your children at a personal development seminar? Like I, when I was a child, I don't remember ever going to a personal uh, development seminar. And they, maybe they weren't popular back then. There's a whole bunch of them now. Or are you willing to at least put your children at a place where they can actually have a, a rich mentor? Now, that might be a little harder to do, but it's easy to do if you just put them in front of the books that these rich mentors or rich people write. That's how you can get your rich mentor. So if we understand that the generation after generation continue to follow the same path towards being broke or just over broke, the working poor, then you got to ask yourself, what am I going to do different? And what am I going to expose my children to that's going to be different so they don't have to be like the masses who don't understand how to build wealth? You got If you want to learn, you got to learn from the people that are doing it. And this is the way that you put yourself in position that you can actually build wealth in order to do some of the great things that you want to do here on this earth. Now, here's the fact. The fact is this. Getting rich begins with the way you think. Getting rich begins with the way you think and what you believe about making money. It begins with the way you think and what you believe about making money. If your parents were broke or in the middle class, you will end up the same if you adopt the same beliefs and philosophies about money. I mean, that's just the reality, right? If you think like they thought, then you'll be where they are. If you adopt their philosophies, then you'll be where they are. And so how many people, if you think about it, how many children actually is, exceed the level of their parents? 
they typically are going to grow up to be very similar to their parents. If your parent was a farmer, you'll probably learn how to be a farmer because that's your biggest influence. And so it's got it's really up to the parents to expose their children to something different in order for their next generation to have something different. That's got to be a conscious decision. And having conversations like this will hopefully increase your conscious level. Now, critical thinking says the only reason people settle for a mediocre middle class existence is because they are unaware of how to move beyond it. And here's what I found to be true, guys. Like when I started teaching about money and going into the classrooms and going to the schools and going to the organizations and talking to the families, they're just unaware. No one has ever had these conversations with them on this level as it relates to their personal financial decisions. They're just unaware. So they're just going along, doing the things that they've always done and getting the, the, the results that they always have gotten because no one has exposed them to or they haven't exposed themselves to a new way or a different way of thinking as it relates to their money. And until they expose themselves and until they go to the seminars, until they read the books, until they are, are surrounded or at least uh, brought into the the vicinity of people who have money and who are doing something different with their money, they're going to continue to believe what they've always believed, what's been pushed on them from the schools and from the churches all of their lives. And it, it's time out for that, man. We can make a choice to learn something different. And it can start very simply as 15 minutes a day. If you make a fire, if you make a New Year's resolution saying that you're going to do something different with your money, but you don't put something different in front of your eyes or your ears, then you're not going to do something different with your money. It's just idle chatter, hot air that sounds good on 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 January 1st. But it's now April 6th. How does this how does that did, did the conversation change in three months? No, it was never really a conversation to begin with. It was just talk. It was hot air. The way that you change is not just by talking. The way that you change is by doing something different. And if you're not willing to read 15 minutes a day, it doesn't cost you anything really to do this, guys. It just costs you a little bit of your time in order to start to put new things into your mind. Then I don't know how you're going to change your financial situation. Now, every action. Uh, uh, the only way to learn how to think like a rich person is to study them. The only way, uh, the, every action we take stems from the way we think and what we believe. While the masses believe becoming wealthy is out of their control, the world class knows earning money and amassing wealth is a cause and effect relationship. The cause of our behavior is our belief system. And the effect of our behavior is the result we get. Let me repeat that again. The cause of our behavior is our belief system. What do you believe? And by uh, and the effect of our behavior is the result of is the result that we get. What do you believe and what are you getting? Cause and effect. Change the cause and by default you automatically change the behavior and bottom line result. Knowing this, the world class is always upgrading their beliefs and philosophies on money by studying those who are wealthier than them. Now, let me ask you this, guys. When you were in school, uh, high school or elementary school, even in college, did they ever tell you to study a wealthy person? Did you ever have to write a book report or, or, or a case study or, or something on people that were wealthy? You were never told to study anybody wealthy. That's interesting. So it's like we got all these examples, but we were never told to study them. And we obviously didn't think about studying them on our own. And so we don't have the case study for our very own lives. Oh, man, here is what they did. I mean, at this point, our children, it'd be great for them to study Mark Zuckerberg. He would be a great example of how he got where he got and how they could do the very same thing if they take the lid off and learn something new and do something different. Mark Zuckerberg was sitting there uh, coding and learning and doing all this stuff while everybody else was partying. He was putting something together, building a system that's now made him the 27th richest person in the world. Isn't that a great person for your children to study? If they want to learn about being wealthy, if they want to learn about being an entrepreneur, if they want to learn about thinking outside the box. This guy is a freaking 27th 
richest person in the world wearing a t-shirt and jeans every day. He don't have to wear no suit and tie because he owned the place. Isn't this a great, I mean, shouldn't the schools be like, hey, everybody uses Facebook. Let's, let's, let's go do a book report or do a, do a study on Facebook. That would be great. But guess what? They're not going to get the masses to, to learn about being wealthy because wealthy in this society is quote unquote for the elite. And I'm telling you that you can be an elite and elite if you decide that you're going to learn what wealthy people have learned. And that's going to change the way that you think your belief system as it relates to money. And that's going to ultimately change the results that you get out of life. Now, Again, we're going through the book, How Rich People Think by Steve Seibold. I've been recommending this book for 54 straight days. People still haven't gotten the book, and that's okay. Created this show so that we can actually go through the book together. It gives you a quote of the day, a critical thinking question of the day, and an action step. So here's your quote of the day by John Jacob Astor. I don't know who that is, but wealth is largely a result of habit. Wealth is largely a result of habit. Do you have wealthy habits happening in your life? Most people don't. Most people have poor habits happening in their life on a regular basis. I don't know who the world taught us to spend more than we earn, but we learned it somewhere and we've been applying that philosophy to our life for the past 20 years and we stay consistently in debt. Who in the world taught you to, to spend more than you earn? Not very... Oh, okay. thank you. John Jacob Astor was a German-American businessman, merchant, fur trader, and investor who was the first prominent member of the Astor family. The first, wow, the first multi-million in the United States? Are you serious? No one ever told me to look him up in the, in the history books to learn about the first multi-millionaire in the United States? Wouldn't that be a great person for us to actually do some history on when we in history class? Isn't that what history is for? Oh, my goodness. The creator of the first trust. Oh, my goodness. All right. I'm upset now at my public school education who didn't have me to study the first multi-millionaire in the United States. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Isn't that American history to learn about the one of the wealthiest people, the first people to be a wealthy person in the United States? Wouldn't that be good information to know, to have on my test? Oh, who's the first multi-millionaire in the United States? Ah, oh, I know that answer. John Jacob Astor. Think about Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is crazy. All right. All right. Critical thinking question. Of the day. You guys got me fired up today. Here's the critical thinking question of the day. Do you think like the rich? Do you think like rich people. Now, we've been going through this thing for 54 days. I'm not sure if everybody's been with me 54 days, but hopefully you're starting to get the concept of how rich people think. And you're changing the way. That you, I know I am changing the way that I think. And I'm like, man, when I think about doing something now, I think about, man, how can I get that done without me having to do it? How can I get someone else to do it so I can still get paid for it and I can still have my time available for me to go do other things? That's how I think now. The, how I used to think was, what do I need to do in order to get it done? In other words, trading my time in order to complete this project project in order for it to be done. You know, you don't trust everybody. You want something done, do it yourself. Now I'm thinking, no, I don't want to do it myself. I want to partner with someone else so we can get this done. It can still get done. I can profit from it and I can still have my time to go do other things that I want to do. I know my thinking has changed in 54 days. How about yours? Do you think like the rich? And here's your uh, here's your action step. Here's what you want to do. I'm seriously upset about this John Jacob Astor revel. I don't know why in the world was this not on my American history test. The first multimillionaire in the United States. I didn't have to name him or study him in history class. That's crazy to me. Okay, I'm sorry. Woo! I guess they couldn't get to some of the important stuff about how to be wealthy. They want to teach you. All right. Action step of the day. Based on what you've learned in this book, make a list of five beliefs rich people have about money and begin telling yourself you believe these things too. Based on what you've learned in this book, 54 days so far, make a list of the five rich beliefs you uh, people have about money. 
and begin telling yourself you believe these things too. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, bro, but I'm upset. All right, guys, I'm sorry, but this is interesting to me that we got a, we got John Jacob Lash, who's got a quote in his book, the first multimillionaire in the United States, and never in my life have I had someone tell me to research John Jacob Laster. I went to plenty of history classes, plenty of United, United States American history classes, and not once, and I'm now, you know, over 30, and I'm just now hearing about Johan Jacob Astor, the first multi-millionaire in the United States. Did you guys know who that was? I know Rebel looked it up. Did you know who it was before you looked it up? This is crazy to me. All right. <laughs> Here's the deal, guys. I'm here Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, going through the book, How Rich People Think. We just now complete day number 54. Tomorrow, we'll be on day number 55. And so hopefully, fifth, you understand how 15 minutes a day can actually help you to keep broke away because we're changing the way that we think about money and we're ultimately changing our results. Now, here's the deal. I'm ERGJ, your certified financial educator, and I'll be here tomorrow at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And here's the question. Will you?